Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting and welcome to this online event from Pearson. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items so you will know how to participate in today's event. Before we discuss how to download any associated materials and use the platform, I would like to inform you that this session will be recorded for regulatory purposes and for our quality assurance. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter anytime by typing your questions into the chat box, which is located at the bottom right side of your screen. You may also interact with the presenters on the same chat box. The chat box is for sharing ideas with the whole group, and anything you type into this window can immediately be seen by other delegates in the room. To enter a question or comment, type into the bottom section of the chat window and hit enter on your keyboard. You may also use the same chat box for assistance in case you encounter any technical issues in viewing or listening to the webinar content. At this time, everyone is joined on mute but will have the control to unmute themselves, so please stay on mute if you don't need to speak. To queue for questions, click on raise hand at the menu bar at the bottom. If you don't see this, click on the icon labeled Participants and select Raise Hand. Otherwise, try holding the Alt button and the letter Y on your keyboard. Ladies and gentlemen, our first presenter for today is Jeff Riol. Thank you, Jeff. Please go ahead. Hi there, everyone. Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, there we go, sharing the screen. Um, and welcome to the GCSE Music uh, Getting Ready uh, for 2022-23 uh, session. Um, what we intend to go through today um, is just run through uh, some of the post results services um, that are available uh, to you um, following uh, the summer series. Obviously, um, the results from summer were the first uh, from exams and uh, NEA uh, for, well, uh, almost three years. So um, good to recap on that. Um, then we'll go through the NEA requirements for um, this coming year um, for 2023 assessments. Um, just then a bit of a, a touch on to uh, online submission, the LWC submission. Um, run through uh, the resources that are available to you and then uh, have some time for any questions uh, that you do have as well. So firstly, uh, the post results services. Um, hopefully most of you um, have uh, gone through a lot of this already. Um, uh, so the first thing to sort of highlight is the E9 moderator report. Um, so that is the report that your moderator writes for performing and composing. Um, that is available through um, Edexcel online. Uh, you do have to have um, the results um, option ticked in your account to do that. Now, a lot of exams officers um, don't give uh, the teachers uh, the permissions to do that. So you may need to speak to your exams officer to download that report and share that with you. Um, obviously that gives um, a general overview of the moderator's uh, view of uh, the process that they went through when looking at your work for performing and composing and will give you um, feedback on that as well. So that can be quite useful. Um, for understanding, helping understanding the results around those components there as well. Uh, then there is also the uh, principal moderator and examiner reports that are written each year. Um, so for performing and composing, um, they have been written um, and give an overview of um, the way centres have approached the um, submissions uh, for uh the 2022 um so that gives you the the sort of whole picture um of submissions and and how that session went uh for those there is the exam principal examiner report as well for uh, the appraising uh, component three a uh, component um and that uh again gives an overview of the series and how students performed on that but also includes um some examples with some commentary um, in there as well. 
Other things uh, that you might find useful to help understand results um, is Results Plus. Um, that is available uh, for component three generally um, uh, to give the most sort of useful uh, breakdown of results in there. Um, it's a really useful tool. Um, it gives um, a breakdown of the marks that your uh, students have got from uh, the exam um, and uh, allows you to compare results um, across the whole of Edexcel or similar centres and you can narrow down things like that and uh, actually really dig quite deep into the data around the exam there as well. Other useful things, um, oh, just to mention about Results Plus as well, um, is that again, you do need uh, the correct permissions on your edX and online accounts to do that. Um, again, that's a tick box in your account, um, just called Results Plus. Um, if you don't have that, um, your exams officer can give you access to that as well. Um, and you can uh, go and uh, have a look and dig deeper into um, the, your cohort's results there. Um, another thing that could be really useful in helping you understand um, marks achieved on um, component three um, appraising is the free access to script service. Um, so that is um, via um, a service called Script Viewer, um, where you can uh, go and you can see a, a candidate script. Um, you do need the candidate, candidate permission to go and do that. Um, uh, but you can go in and see the marks uh, for each question um, and see the candidate response in there as well. So that could be quite useful um, to help understand uh, the marks there. Um, that can also um, help to inform um, if you request any reviews of marking, for example, as well. Um, so there is a deadline for accessing uh, the uh, the scripts there. That is the 16th of December, um, 2022. Um, and you would need to access scripts and download them by that uh, point if you wanted to keep them uh, for future teaching and learning as well. Um, the final thing to mention are the reviews of marking and moderation. Um, so, for GCSE Music, um, there's uh, two different services available, really. Um, there's the review of moderation, which is used for performing and composing. Um, that is where um, marks can go up, down, or stay the same if you request um, a, a, a review of moderation. Um, however, for those two components of performing and composing, um, the grades are protected for this series um, for the candidates because you uh, have to submit the whole of the original sample that was submitted for that review. Um, for reviews of marking, uh, which is available for component three, um, that's done on an individual basis. Um, again, marks can go up, down or stay the same in that process. Um, but um, that's where the grade is protected because it is an individual thing. Um, there is a deadline for requesting this, um, and that is the 29th of September. So um, what's that? That's about two weeks away, isn't it? Um, so um, those are uh, the sort of overview of the post results services. Um, that are available to you um, at this point in the year. Um, just pause to see if there's any questions on that at this point. Doesn't look like there is on the chat coming in at all. Um, so I will move on. Um, so we will now look at the NEA requirements uh, for 2022-23. Um, so this is obviously probably um, the bit that's uh, going back to normal um, and, and back to uh, specification uh, requirements. So um, 
it is intended that assessments for 2023 will return to specification requirements. Um, that will be kept under review uh, by DfE and Ofqual, and we will obviously communicate things um, if uh, things do change and uh, we need to inform you of anything there. Um, on the slide, on this slide, there is a link to the DfE of course statement on the 2023 assessments um, that just clarifies that because of um, the restrictions that were in place um, and the impact that that had on teaching and learning, um, uh, there is no longer a need to uh, have any of these uh, adaptations in place. So we will be returning to um, the specification requirements here. So what does that mean? Um, just as a reminder, I suppose, really, um, for performing, um, it is going back to two performances. So there is one solo and one ensemble performance. Um, each of those, um, needs to be a single continuous recording um, so you will have one recording for solo and one recording for ensemble um, if a student does perform more than one piece for either solo or ensemble that does need to be one continuous recording for that performance so uh, for example you they could perform two solo pieces so you have one recording for solo with two pieces and then you've got your one ensemble recording that does need to last for a combined duration of at least four minutes um, if it is under um, that requirement there is a proportional penalty um, that is in place um, that's uh, published in the specification um, where that reduces the mark by a certain percentage, um, depending on, on how far under that time it is. Um, the recordings can be done at any point during this academic year. Um, and obviously um, you can re-record things as much as you want to get uh, the best performance um, out of your uh, students there. Um, and things need to be submitted by the 15th of May, 2023. Um, what also could be a good thing to mention here is um, when you are considering the submission of marks and everything like that and preparing work for submission, um, there is the um, requirement uh, that came out uh, pre-pandemic, it was, um, of, to allow uh, students to uh, review the marks that they get for uh, components where it is internally marked and then moderated. Um, so that gives students a chance to review the marks they've given and then request any uh, material uh, that has been used to make those decisions um, to potentially have an independent review as well. Um, so that uh, was something that came out um, pre-pandemic, um, I think it came into effect for the 2019 assessments off the top of my head. Um, so that's just a reminder there when you're thinking about um, uh, your in, own internal deadlines um, to allow for the submission of work and those reviews to take place. Um, for composing, um, we are again returning to two compositions. So it's one free, uh, one free composition and one to a brief that was released on the 1st of September, uh, 2022. Um, there's a link there to the slide, um, to the um, composition briefs that are available on the website. Um, the combined duration um, for the two compositions, um, must be at least three minutes um, and again um, there is that proportional penalty um, if uh, the submission is under that duration um, they must have at least five hours of development and the final write-up and recording completed in the center under teacher supervision as well 
Um, and again, submission by the 15th of May um, 2023 for compositions there. Um, I can see that uh, someone has asked about performances. Are students able to record their performances remotely? Um, because we are returning to the specification requirements, um, that is a no, um, because that was an adaptation that was brought in um, and we were allowed to have it in place um, for um, COVID restrictions um, over the last couple of years. Um, so now it would need to be uh, with the teacher present um, at the performance. Um, so uh, it could be a, a remote recording um, with that at this point. Um, so that's uh, the return to the normal specification requirements there. Um, again, just with uh, composing, um, a reminder about the, um, because again, it's internally marked and uh, moderated, uh, that there is that opportunity for students to request uh, the review, so you should be sharing the marks uh, before they are submitted um, to allow for that review to, to happen. Um, oh, someone else has asked for links to briefs. Uh, okay. Uh, I will need to share that. At, uh, in a minute um, after I've finished with the slides um, and I'll pop the link to the briefs up in a second. Um, and someone else uh, has mentioned how many weeks before the deadline of 15th May does the board suggest for reviewing any A marks? Uh, sure, then there should be two deadlines for pupil parents to ask for remarking of any A. Um, that is something that we uh, <laughs> haven't given um, is a, a specific deadline um, because uh, from the JCQ requirement to do this, um, there isn't any specific dates in mind um, for, for giving that. Um, however, um, you would need to consider the time that it would take for an independent uh, review to take place of the materials. Um, that's likely to be you know, a week or so, I would suggest to allow for that. Um, so therefore, um, if you are probably considering uh, student work to be in sometime around that Easter holiday, um, to allow for all of this process to happen, um, that's sort of a ballpark figure, but obviously you've got to consider your own uh, ways of working within that as well and um, how that can fit in uh, with your plans uh, in your centre as well. Um, it is worth speaking to your um, SLT um, because they uh, probably have some sort of policy in place for this because it's not just uh, an effect for um, music, it is um, across all qualifications. Um, so really, it sh uh, there should be some sort of uh, centre policy on this um, that could be in place um, for all subjects. Um, the other thing I suppose to mention before going on to um, uh, LWT submission is to say that um, with the intention of returning specification requirements, um, that uh, the appraising exam um, will uh, return to normal in terms of not having advanced information. That's the intention, but um, there may well be um, uh, some announcement on that from DfE at some point um, to, to clarify the situation around that. Um, and uh, again, we'll keep you uh, informed and up to date on that. Um, so what is the protocol with student centre announcements uh, with performances? Um, so there is no need to include announcements on performances. Um, so uh, that's just to clarify that. Um, and then what is LWT submission? So 
uh, LWT submission is um, the online submission process um, for uh, NEA, so the coursework uh, of performing and composing, um, stands for learner work transfer. Um, so that is the way that the um, material, uh, so the recording of performances and compositions, uh, the CAS, CAS forms and uh, any scores are submitted to us. Um, so um, I will later on this academic year um, run a session um, around um, LWT submission again and going through um, all of the, that process. Um, so the online submission uh, through LWT is by the 15th of May 2023. Um, that will include uh, the sample um, of students' work, uh, so the students within the sample um, that you need to submit. Um, along with that, um, if uh, they aren't included in the sample, um, you should include your highest and lowest marked candidate for each component um, if they aren't in the sample already. Um, and uh, in the system, it's uh, easy enough to add those uh, learners and uh, into the uh, submission process. Um, there's some general tips and guidance I want to give as well at this point, just so you're aware and uh, sort of uh, plan ahead in terms of the things that you will be submitting through LWT. Um, just to help with um, the upload process and also um, so it's easier in terms of the admin of all of this as well. So one bit of uh, advice and tip is um, with the PAS CAS forms um, that are submitted to have them as one file um, for the whole document. So one file for the PAS form, one file for the CAS form, because obviously they get uploaded uh, in different parts of LWT. Um, so that um, obviously they are multiple page documents, but having them in one file um, so that they can be scrolled through um, as a whole rather than uh, each page as an individual file that's uploaded. Um, another thing would be uh, to say to use MP3s um, to upload the audio um, and they should be CD quality. Um, so 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, um, but obviously trying to make these as small as possible. Um, please don't, uh, I would say, please don't submit WAV or A files, um, which are much larger audio files, um, because that's difference in sound quality um, is needed for GCSE music. Um, and uh, those files can take a long time to upload um, just because of the, the size difference of, of that file. Um, and then again, with the scores that are being uploaded, um, if you could create a single continuous file for all the pages of the scores being submitted as well, um, that would uh, be um, uh, quite uh, a better way of presenting that and easier to um, sort of scroll through everything um, when uh, it's all being looked at as well. Um, I can see um, a good few questions coming in. Um, so can you please go through the composition brief to clarify what is required? Um, yep, happy to, to do that. Um, could pass the CAS uh, laid out? Um, not sure what that's really asking, um, but I'm happy to go through. Um, just having a look. Um, yeah, just to clarify, uh, when I said create single continuous file, for all pages of scores being submitted, um, that meant um, a file for each score um, rather than a whole 
continuous file for um, each piece, uh, each performance. Um, so yeah, just to, to clarify that. Um, I'm just having a look before questions disappear off the top of my screen as well. Uh, are this year's pattern counts forms already available? Uh, and if not, when will they be? Um, they are not up online yet. I need to follow this up uh, with colleagues uh, to see when they are um, going to be up online. Um, I will uh, double check that and let people know as soon as possible. Um, could pass cast forms be identical this year? Uh, Cass had significantly less space for teachers to add their comments. Uh, yeah, that was a formatting thing with the CAS, I believe, um, that uh, didn't uh, adjust the text size. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll ask for that to be adjusted. Um, we still choose between individual candidate pass cast forms. Uh, there was an option to use spreadsheet. Um, so that's something that's being looked at at the moment um, in terms of uh, the pass cast forms that will be available. Uh, for compositions, is there a minimum size requirement for staff notation? Um, there isn't uh, anything set, uh, but obviously make sure that everything is uh, easily seen and legible um, is uh, the thing that's uh, needed there um, if they are using staff notation, that is. Um, so do you mean a single uh, PDF CAS for each pupil or the whole sample? Um, so that would be a CAS for each uh, a uh, student um, that's being submitted. Um, so, yeah, there will be a recording of this as well. Um, and someone else, uh, can we still choose individual pass CAS forms or should we be using the spreadsheet for all candidates in the centre? Um, as I said, the, the forms that will be available for this year are going to be different from the forms that are available uh, last year because obviously of the different requirements um, between uh, this year and, and last because obviously last year there was only one performance and one composition uh, so there will be um, the new um, briefs to make sure that that uh, the new PAS and CAS forms available um, to show what the requirements are in terms of the two performances and uh, two compositions. Uh, sorry, along the same lines, and just to clarify, one file per CAS per student and one file per PAS per student. Yes, that's correct. So uh, there will be a CAS file per student and a PAS file per student. Um, right. Uh, I just need to move a few things around uh, on my screen. Um, as I try and go to the link to the composition brief to share that. Um, so to access the composition briefs, um, they are behind uh, the silver padlock. Um, so that does mean uh, you would need um, your edX and online login to access them. Um, I will just share the link in chat to everyone. As well, I think someone's got there before me by the look of it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they're all there. Um, and um, 
someone did ask about uh, talking through the composition briefs, uh, what I'll do, I'll wait for the sort of questions section to uh, talk through that and then I can um, sort of go through any questions that you do have uh, with those as well. Um, so uh, I'll go through those in a minute. Um, so just to highlight um, things that you might find useful as well um, as we go back to these normal specification requirements. Um, so on the website, there are lots of free resources that are available to help uh, support you with your planning and delivery. Um, so that is uh, exemplar material um, for performing, uh, composing and appraising. Uh, there's course planners, set work guides, um, there's any past training content and schemes of work um, that all kind of falls under the teaching and learning materials section of the specification page. Obviously, you've got access to past papers, uh, the mark schemes and examiner reports as well. Um, and with the past papers, they should all have um, the exam audio with them there as well. Um, and that's under the exam materials section. And then uh, under the other sort of section, the specification uh, sample assessment material that was produced when um, the specification uh, first came out. And there's also the difficulty level booklet, um, which contains the difficulty levels for lots and lots of pieces of music um, that have generally been on grade exam. Uh, syllabus um, over the last few years. Uh, so that's uh, quite a large document now um, to, to list all that. So that's um, all the material there um, to help and support you with um, your delivery. So really, it's time for um, any questions. Um, And I will uh, sort of go through things as I can. Um, so um, quite surprised that there is three composed song, binary piece, study any, and that fusion piece is based on Indian classical music, not heavily studied in the course, and may be difficult for recording specific instruments. Um, Obviously, um, in terms of specific instruments there, um, it's uh, possible to use uh, live recordings or um, any sort of MIDI representations. I know that uh, some, obviously your general MIDI sound sets may not have all the instruments uh, required for things like that, um, but there are usually um, other, sort of sound sources and, and instrument sets um, that are available as well um, in most um, sort of uh, score writing packages and, and doors uh, there as well. Um, well. Someone else has asked about difficulty level booklet uh, changed last summer to a more reduced version. Please have an older version again. Um, the the actual newer version um, just uh, reduced in terms of duplicates generally um, and didn't take any pieces out uh, to my recollection. Um, it was presented as a, a, um, a spreadsheet version with tabs, uh, so it became sort of more easily uh, navigable. Um, in terms of that, but uh, I thought as well, um, I think uh, that's the sort of general thing um, about the difficulty level book there. Um, it was just uh, to sort of remove some of the duplicate things uh, in there. Um, to narrow that to narrow that down and make it easier to sort of go through um, instruments. 
Uh, is it possible to clarify what sheet music uh, should accompany the solo performance? Is YouTube moving piano video acceptable? Okay, so um, the thing with uh, sheet music is that um, if a score exists, um, then it should be uh, submitted. Um, so that's uh, the sort of uh, thing there. Um, there, when uh, that rule came in, there wasn't a definition of uh, what it means uh, for a score to exist um, and uh, how much searching a teacher or student should do on that. Um, I think if it's easily found via a Google search, um, you know, in the first page or so of searches, um, or is clearly on a graded exam syllabus, then obviously that score does exist there. Um, YouTube, uh, actual links to YouTube um, wouldn't be recommended um, because um, videos can be taken down and that can cause issues if they are um, in that moderation process. Um, so it's, it's you know, much more advised if a YouTube clip uh, or video is used is to have the recording of that um, that you can submit alongside um, the, the student performance of that um, to um, make that judgment. Um, be useful to have a bit more guidance about how the section B essay is marked. It's possible to summarize what a pupil has to do to get to 12 out of 12. Um, I hadn't planned to go through anything in terms of that in this session um, and haven't prepared anything to, to talk about section B specifically um, there. Um, what I would advise is to look at the examiner reports for that component um, that always has um, an example in it's not always, you know, and very rarely would it be a 12 out of 12 marked essay in the examiner report. What is generally used is a, um, you know, a, a another mark um, and there is guidance on what the, the answer did and how um, it could also um, sort of move up the levels as well. So, um, my first sort of advice would be to, to read that. Um, then if you are um, still wanting a bit more guidance and discussion around that, um, I'd be happy to discuss that out of here. Um, give me an email on teachingmusic at pearson.com um, and uh, we can have a, a discussion at another point there. Um, uh, Difficulty levels book that did not contain all the instruments anymore, uh, e.g. bassoon or viola, as the previous version had. Okay, um, I can look into that of bringing those back in um, uh, if they are there on the previous version. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult to add back in. Um, okay, recently moved schools uh, from RSL to GCSE. Uh, is Garage Baron an acceptable program for compositions? Yes, um, absolutely so. Um, so yeah, annotated screenshots um, are fine. Um, that's not um, a problem um, for compositions. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, there are specimen answers section B somewhere on the website with scores of 12 out of 12. Don't call where though. Um, yeah, so uh, in the teaching and learning uh, materials under the exemplars, um, there would be things like that as well um, to, to help guide. Um, so other instruments, particularly brass band ones, also overlooked in the difficulty level uh, booklet. Might it be possible to add these in over time? Um, possibly uh, that's uh, another team that would deal with um, working on that document. Um, but I could certainly um, make some inquiries about um, developing that as well. 
Um, are there any exemplar compositions with annotated screenshots rather than scores available anywhere? Yes, there are. Um, I believe in one of the past training uh, acts uh, that's available online, um, there is one. Um, I've not looked at it for some time, but I think it is in the MOX marking, uh, not the MOX marking, uh, music coursework marking training um, that's available there. Um, there was one in there. And then also, I think, I can't, again, I can't remember for sure. Um, in the materials that were released to centres for the 2021 um, assessments, um, there were example uh, grade exemplification material there um, and that had examples of work at various grades uh, with some commentary um, and I can't remember if uh, there was one in there that uh, was based on screenshots as well. Um, that I need to look at it um, to be sure that there is one in there. But that is also quite useful material um, to help um, understand um, the marking as well. Uh, any advice on how to tackle the set works would be greatly appreciated. Um, again, with the set works, um, there are the guides, uh, the free guides um, to each set work that highlight the key sort of musical features um, that are needed in terms of the teaching. Um, so I, my first sort of point towards uh, anything there would be um, those free support guides um, for each of the set works. Um, uh, and uh, someone else there has very kindly um, put in a link um, about uh, teaching the set works um, as well, um, which is um, something else uh, that I was about to sort of uh, get to. I think that's on there. I can't see it on a um training uh on the past training um so i'm not sure um uh, which one that is um but uh yeah so i would certainly suggest um those um uh guides there um to uh each of the set works um Okay, binary form, please can you clarify? Uh, can it be a binary form composition that is then developed and extended, i.e. theme variations, or is the whole piece to be in, uh, to be binary uh, form overall? It's not a lot of scope for development. Um, so um, there was a uh, reply that um, I, posted on a Facebook group uh, yeah, just to talk through some of this, um, which I will go through in a second, uh, if you just bear with me. So, um, So it is intended that it should be a, a binary composition um, that obviously has the AB or ABB form, um, but to allow candidates to meet uh, the develop and extend ideas um, uh, with bullet point in assessment grid one, um, it would be possible to include variations. So for example, A, A1, B, B1, um, and that would allow candidates to uh, the scope to extend their themes and add modulations and 
create um, sort of musically pleasing outcomes there as well. Um, and someone else has asked about rounded binary. And yes, um, rounded binary form uh, would be an acceptable way as well. Uh, so hopefully that answers uh, that question there as well. Um, okay, uh, I don't know if there are going to be any more questions coming in. I'll just give it a couple of uh, minutes um, to see if people um, continue typing. Um, on the slides as well, um, near the end, obviously, there is my contact details. Um, so there's uh, the contact form, which is the general sort of uh, contact form for Pearson. Um, there's uh, my email address, uh, which is teachingmusic at pearson.com. Um, there's the phone number. Um, there's a link to the Pearson Music Community page, uh, which, um, again, it's uh, a place where you can join, um, ask questions um, and uh, sort of uh, talk about things there as well. Um, there's a link to the appointment booking service. So um, that uh, is something that I set up uh, just around about Easter, um, which allows you to book a video um, call with me. Um, generally, they're about 10 minutes long um, and uh, you can sort of book that in, ask me any questions, and then there's uh, the Twitter um, address there as well. Um, okay, someone has asked about what do you recommend for the through composed song? Um, what are you expecting to hear? Um, I haven't, if I just bring up the brief of that. Um, so, compose a song for a solo voice and accompaniment with through composed structure. It's performed at a concert in a small venue. Um, okay, with that, um, obviously, um, what I would be sort of talking about and, and looking at there is um, understanding the sort of scenario. Uh, and the audience and, and or occasion for that. Um, so it's, you know, thinking about that small venue. Um, so it's a solo voice and accompaniment um, there as well. Um, if you are sort of talking about, um, uh, I mean, without this, I'm not quite sure what you're asking in terms of what are we expected to hear. Um, are you talking about a the kind of structure in there as such? Um, if that could be clarified, that would be good. Um, three components. Okay, if the melody is the same but different coming to make it three composed. Um, that's something I would probably uh, need to um, just get confirmed uh, with, um, I'd probably go through the uh, sort of principal moderator to uh, get something uh, confirmed uh, with that. Um, so if you could, uh, email me at teaching music um, I can then uh, pass that on uh, and get a reply for you um, in that with the intention of, of the three composed song there um, so it's best to sort of do that um, and get the actual um, sort of uh, the response there for you um, and the same there with the about the each section need different chords um, because just want to make sure that uh, you're given the, the correct sort of um, guidance there um, with that. Uh, the word instrument includes voice. Um, this is a quote from this year's composition document. Does this really mean that uh, you could include voices in all briefs, including briefs one and three? 
Um, so, uh, certainly, uh, brief three um, could include voice in there. Um, because of, of the, the wording of that. Um, again, the intention around brief one is not to uh, include voice in there, um, although um, the interpretation of that wording of, of instrument uh, would be uh, that you could include it. Um, okay, I appreciate your answer to some of the questions that you've requested to email in. Could these be made available to us here? Um, I will see if that's possible um, to share things wider with um, everyone here. Um, obviously, uh, the way the, the event is managed, I don't get your um, emails, addresses, and, and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can see if that's possible. Uh, did I say there was an extensive list of performance exemplars? Um, so there is um, performance exemplars. Um, so these would have been uh, from uh, mainly uh, before the uh, the specification launch, they are under the uh, teaching and learning materials um, tab. Um, if I can, I will just pop a link in to the chat there. Um, so there's uh, the exemplar material. Uh, section under there where there is uh, performance exemplars, um, but also under the uh, summer 2021 assessment materials for centres section, um, under the grade exemplification material, um, you will have some uh, performances as well. So brief one, can you write a solo song for voice and accompaniment in binary form? Please voice according to the Excel wording. Um, in terms of that, um, sorry, just going back to the briefs there. Um, the word instrument includes voice. Um, and uh, for that brief, um, yeah, obviously um, it does say solo instrument um, there, which could be interpreted as voice. Um, that brief, um, although is you know, listed as instrumental music 1700 or 1820, that's the, the general area of study that that brief links to, um, but it's not limited to uh, styles of music um, within that area of study. Um, as it does say, the music may be in any style as well. Uh, which one does music need to be stylist appropriate 1800 and style as written further down in the brief yes um so yeah i mean it could be in jazz you know you could write a jazz piece depending on the uh the interpretation of that brief and uh the uh uh, the uh, situation, um, so the um, sort of audience or occasion for that as well. OK, 
okay, my student wishes to submit a composition in the South Indian Carnatic singing style. How can I access support to correctly mark, assess, and my student adhere to criteria? Um, I mean, in terms of that, we I don't think we have any examples uh, with in that sort of style um, in the exemplar material. And um, I don't know if we would have ever had um, any um, uh, submitted before in that style. We may have um, and, and how they were assessed. Um, again, I think um, it is about looking at obviously the composition and applying the, the mark scheme to that composition um, and, and considering the descriptors within the mark bands um, with that um, as you would with any any style um, and considering that um, but if you do have um, any sort of questions around that um, please, again please email in um, and I happy to pass things on to to get a response from the principal moderator there um to sort of um get you further advice on that um uh, about uh considering the the descriptors against uh things in that style um Okay, uh, so uh, someone uh, said about um, not very clear against the area of study. However, uh, could I please uh, do a general email so we'll head to music clarifying this. Um, so I'm in my next update, uh, email update that also goes online. Um, I'm happy to include that um, in some way to clarify things. Um, so, I mean, the brief does say that it can be in any style, um, but uh, yeah, if uh, happy to clarify that further. Okay, um, I think we are probably there in terms of questions. Um, and we're um, almost up to five o'clock as well. Um, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, I hope you found uh, it useful. Um, if you do have anything uh, that you want clarifying on in terms of any of the composition briefs, um, then please do email in um, to teachingmusicatpierce.com um, and happy to answer any further questions um, there as well. All right, uh, so thank you very much.